Hey everyone, in this video uh, we're going to go over how to determine the conclusion of any hypothesis test. Okay, so before we do that, uh, there's one key thing we need to know. So if you're doing a hypothesis test and your p-value is less than or equal to your alpha, that's your level of significance, you want to reject h sub 0. Okay, and if your p-value is strictly greater than your alpha, which is your level of significance, you're going to fail to reject, fail to reject h sub 0. So it's pretty easy to memorize this. Small reject, small reject, small reject, bigger, you fail to reject. Okay, so how do you use this to determine like the final conclusion of a hypothesis test? Well, let's actually do some simple examples so you see how it works. Say we have a fictional hypothesis test, so h sub 0, that's our null hypothesis, and say it's mu, which is the population mean, equal to 50. And then our alternative hypothesis, h sub 1, say it's mu less than 50. And in this uh, fictional example, let's suppose that our alpha is equal to 0 0.05, and our p-value is equal to say 0 0.02. So in this case, the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, right? Our p-value, in this case, is 0 0.02, and our alpha is 0 0.05. So our p-value is less than or equal to alpha. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. We would reject h sub 0. So what does that mean? So whenever you reject h sub 0, then there is enough evidence to support h1. So in this case, you would say, enough evidence to support h1. So whenever you reject h sub 0, you have enough evidence to support h1. So I'm going to come back over here and fill that in. So when you reject h sub 0, this means that you support h1. So you have enough evidence or sufficient evidence, enough evidence to support H1. So if you reject H0, there is sufficient evidence, there is enough evidence to support H1. Okay, let's do another example. I'll squeeze it in here. So let me partition the space here. There we go. <laughs> so we have our null hypothesis. Let's say it's mu equals 75. And let's say our alternate hypothesis is mu greater than 75. That's our alternative hypothesis. And let's say our alpha, again, is 0 0.05. And our p-value in this fictional example is 0.24. So in this case, the p-value is bigger than alpha, right? So in this case, we fail to reject. So the p-value is bigger than our alpha. So we fail to reject h sub 0. So we, when, we, when we reject h sub 0, we have enough evidence to support h1. When we fail to reject h sub 0, then we don't have enough evidence to support h1. So in this case, there is not enough evidence. Not enough evidence to support h1. So when you reject h sub 0, you have enough evidence to support h1. When you fail to reject h sub 0, in this case, there's not enough evidence, not enough evidence to support H1. So when you reject H sub 0, there is enough evidence to support H1. When you fail to reject, there is not enough evidence to support H1. So if you were doing a written interpretation, let's go back to the first example, you would reject H sub 0, and so then you would say there is sufficient evidence to claim that the population mean is less than 50. Because we rejected the null hypothesis, there is sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the population mean is less than 50. In this example here, we failed to reject the null hypothesis, so there is not sufficient evidence to support the alternative hypothesis. So because we failed to reject the null hypothesis, there is not sufficient evidence 
to support the claim that the mean is bigger than 75. If we had rejected the null hypothesis here, then there would be sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean is bigger than 65. So whenever you reject H sub 0, there is enough evidence for H1. If you fail to reject H sub 0, there is not enough evidence for H1. I hope this video has helped you in some way. That's it. Thanks for watching.